Is it is it hot in here? back here with another Venus in the signs video for you today and we're doing the Venus in Aries. Now I have made a Venus introduction video, links up above in the description box below. You can watch that and then come back and watch this video to get an idea about what Venus is really doing in your chart. So if you have a Venus in Aries, you could have your Sun in Aries, Taurus, Gemini, pa Pisces, <laughs> or Aquarius. So you can't have your sign any of the other zodiac signs because Venus doesn't move more than two signs away from the sun. So this video will be divided into four parts. The clothing style and mannerisms of the Venus and Aries. The seduction style of Venus and Aries. The what this Venus sign is attracted to and then the relationship and love style. If you are watching this and you are a straight woman, the parts that will apply to you will be the clothing style and the mannerisms the seduction style, and the relationship and love style. If you are watching this and you are a gay woman, all four parts of the video will apply to you. And if you're watching this and you are a straight man, the parts that apply to you will be the relationship style and what you're attracted to. And if you're watching this and you're a gay man, the parts that apply to you will be your relationship style and partially your seduction style. So let's get started. Oh, so the first part when it comes to the clothing style and mannerisms might also apply to you if you have a rising in Aries, but just the first part. So these people, there can be, they can be super masculine in the way that they dress, but they can also be super feminine. But if they're dressed kind of in a masculine way, uh, they will still appear to be hot. If they dress feminine, they will still appear to be hot. You know what I mean? Like Marilyn Monroe in her red dress. She's, uh, I think, a Gemini with the Venus in Aries. If, I feel like if they could walk around naked, they would. Because there's that rawness within them where they kind of... You know, Aries is ruled by Mars, which is a very raw sexual uh, sign, right? A uh, planet, sorry. So, the, the, and Venus is supposed to be your feminine expression, so the feminine expression of these women are coming out into a masculine Mars sign. So, you know, their sexuality, if they could express the sexuality, they would express it to, as a, as a way of being, as their mannerism almost. As a way of identifying with their femininities through their sexuality. With, and with that in mind, they would, they like to dress in a way where uh, they like to maybe reveal their waist or cleavage or something really tight on them, things like that. You know shocking red or like black leather is a thing because at the end of the day they would like to make a statement that they really don't care what you think about them they're gonna wear what they want to wear you know you are very confident in the way that you express yourself and in your clothing style like with a venus and aries um you're just gonna be yourself and you don't whatever that means to you and you don't care too much what other people are gonna think now when it comes to the seduction style of the Venus and Aries, this is really interesting because this sign being very um, assertive and being the sign that is ruled by Mars tends to not seduce as much as they chase. So the way they seduce is by chasing you. Now this could depend on aspects and the houses that the Venus is placed, but most of the time you are going to be not really afraid of rejection. I mean, if you go after somebody and you kind of, they say no or they reject you, you kind of be like, fine, then that's fine, I'll just move on. So generally, you're going to express what you feel, you're going to tell the person that you're interested that you are interested and that you want to go out and things like that. But while that person is your object of affection, they are your one and only object of affection. 
you've got you don't have a bunch of different options there that one that you're setting your goal to if it doesn't work then you'll let it go if it does great let's move on and yes because this sign was Mars and Aries was the first house you can kind of use your body to seduce and you have and you tend to have like a really athletic build or a really um, you take care of your body your physical appearance a lot because that's what you used to seduce so through things like you know playing sports or being very athletic or doing some kind of dance or just wearing really sexy clothing and attire that's how you seduce maybe selfies and things like that can be used as well yes you would like to appear you you know you kind of seduce someone by teasing them a lot that's a very Venus and Aries thing. You tease them, you challenge them to something, you dare them to do something. You show that you are daring in the way that you approach them and you kind of expect them to do the same for you. So it's kind of like the more challenging the person is for you, the more that you're gonna be uh, provoked to seduce someone and you will seduce them by showing them that you can kind of jump the cliff to get to them so like you know if someone's kind of uh, someone's really busy okay let's say that you're interested in a career person who's like super busy with their job that's gonna be like a challenge for you and you're gonna kind of want to show that person that you're gonna kind of want to seduce them by showing that even though that they are really busy with their lives you're gonna be there the moment they leave work <laughs> um, just because you want them so much you see what i mean so if you have a venus and aries you can kind of be attracted to kind of those celebrities that i showed you earlier the clothing style and the mannerisms but now there can be two types of physical appearance that you're attracted to maybe it's one or maybe it's both so the first kind will be more sporty or athletic kind of look that you could be attracted to you know someone who's wearing sport clothes sweatshirt sweatpants things like that being all sweaty and stuff the second type that you can be attracted to is the one that really um, is sexy, like wear, like a Marilyn Monroe, where she wears a red dress, uh, red lips, you know, just seeming very feminine, wearing a lot of makeup, you know, being very bold in their makeup, things like that. Yeah, you re you're gonna be really attracted to somebody who likes that push and pull with you, and who maybe likes to start fights with you even but it's just you know it's all fun games with you there you're looking for someone you're gonna be attracted to someone who is kind of devoted like you are and who can give you what you want but not all the time because that you need that push and pull but if they can most of the time meet your needs meet your wants meet your desires you will like that but also you don't want that all the time you could like someone who's more vivacious and outspoken and kind of loud, not really the shy type. You're not going to be really be attracted to that. And you know, someone who maybe has an ambition and they have their own goals and hopes in life and they're going to fight to make those things come true for them. That's very attractive to you. Okay, so now when it comes to the relationship and the love style of the Venus and Aries, yes, these people, you, are kind of impulsive of course because when you feel that you're in love it has a lot to do with testosterone and estrogen levels in your body and those hormones are really impulsive heady uh, kind of hormones right so you can really like push your way into a relationship when you feel that passion until you get what you want but will you keep it that's really going to depend on a lot of other things that goes on within the relationship. Okay, so if you think about the opposite side of Aries, which is Libra, you know, Libra is a sign of compromise and equality and things like that and commitment, right? So Aries is initially going to be less compromising, less um, about equality, but at the same time, because they're polar opposites, they need each other to balance things out. So a very mature Venus and Aries person will adopt some of that Libra into them. And you can be someone who is able to really know what your partner's wants and needs are and give that to them. The Venus and Aries naturally knows what they want and what they need. 
So if they adopt a bit of Libra, they'll know what their partner wants and needs. Like really know it. If you're more of like the unconscious Venus and Aries, you'll kind of get more than you give. But if you're the more conscious, uh, balanced Venus and Aries, you'll kind of have an equal give and take within a partnership. The more conscious Venus and Aries people will always really be emotionally there within a relationship. They'll be passionate throughout your relationship with them. You'll be very confident and very sexy and you will fight on the side of the person that you love no matter what. Like even if that person might have done something that wasn't quite so right, you'll still see their perspective. You can still see their perspective and then be on their side. So you can always count on the Venus and Aries to be there with you, stick with you and stay by your side um, when you're going through anything tough in your life. Of course, the more unconscious Venus and Aries, un imbalanced Venus and Aries, yes, will, like I said, seem to get more than they give, and they can also be a little bit pushy in their relationships to get what they want. But they would still fight for you, and they would still be very confident and sexy, no matter whether they're conscious or they're the unconscious one. <laughs> You like to do something with your partner. You need to do something with your partner. You need to have an activity going. You need to get the action going with your partner, whatever that might be. Whether that's like you want to start a business with your partner, you want to do projects together, you want to do things in the bedroom, you want to do some creative endeavors with your partner, you want to travel, whatever it is, you need to be doing something because that's how you love, that's how you show love. And you can kind of feel like if your partner doesn't want to engage in activities with you, sometimes you feel like maybe they don't really love you. That can happen with the Venus and Aries. So yeah, what I love most about this Venus placement is that they're very honest people. They're very straightforward. You'll never have to second guess what they're really feeling about you because it will be all over you. They will make sure that you know how they feel and they'll do it in a very honest way. These people don't lie when they're in a relationship with you. They're very honest. And I feel like if you can, if you have that equal give and take where you do things with them to show them that you love them, they will not cheat. These people are not cheaters. I mean, they could be, not saying they, they aren't with all other things, but mainly if you give them that passion, they will be very devoted to you. They're very single minded, right? If you're their, the one, they'll make you their goal. And they won't be too pushy about it because they'll be more conscious. So they'll make you their goal, but they'll do it in the right way where you have an equal give and take in a relationship. And that is what I love about the Venus and Aries. So that's my take on the Venus and Aries. If you have this Venus placement, then comments below what your experiences have been. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button below. Um, if you haven't, if you've already subscribed, then thank you very much for coming along um, on these astrology growth journeys, learning and growing together, and having better relationships with the people around us. And I'll see you in the next video, guys. Bye!